okay hello everyone in a new video so we have reached part 5 of chapter 3 which is the chapter of dc voltage and the second unit unit of electricity in this one we are going to solve some exercises related to this chapter now section 20 exercise number 9 they are telling me to convert to the, fo the following units to the SI uh, the following quantities are given by the electric current denoted by I and the electric voltage denoted by V or U then let's recall in order to convert from milliamps to amps, we divide by 1000. And in order to convert from amps to milliamps, we simply multiply by 1000. Then this is the first rule. Recall that uh, the SI unit of the electric current is given by capital A, which is the amperes. And in order to convert from millivolts, to volts we also divide by 1000 and from volts to millivolts we multiply by 1000 then this is the second rule and finally in order to convert from kilovolts to volts we multiply by 1000 and to convert from volts to kilovolt we divide by 1000 and this is the third rule recall that the SI unit of the voltage is given by capital V which is volts then number one we have that the electric current I1 is given by 650 milliamps So milliamps is not the SI unit of electric current. The SI unit of electric current is amperes. In order to convert from milliamps to amperes, we need to divide by 1000. And 650 divided by 1000, this will give us 0 0.65 amperes. Then the value of I1 is given by 0 0.65 amperes. And now as for the electric current I2, which is equal to 300 milliamps. We know that milliamps is not the SI unit of electric current. In order to convert from milliamps to amps, we divide by 1000. Then 300 divided by 1000 will give us 0 0.3 amperes. Then the value of the electric current I2 is given by 0 0.3 amperes. Now as for the electric current I3, which is given by, in this case, 1000 milliamps. We know that milliamps is not the SI unit of electric current. We need to convert it to the SI, which is given by amperes. Dividing by 1000, this will give us 1 amperes. Then I3 is equal to 1 amperes. This is it for number 1. Now in number 2, they are telling me that the voltage of L1 Probably the voltage across a lamp L1 is given by 15 kilovolts. Now in order to convert from kilovolts to volts, we multiply by 1000. Then 15 multiplied by 1000. This will give us 15,000 volts. So the voltage across the lamp L1, let's say for example, is given by 15,000 volts. Now, as the voltage V across the lamp L2 is given by 3.5 kilovolts, now in order to convert from kilovolts to volts, we multiply by 1000. This will give us 3500 volts. So V across L2 is given by 3500 volts. Now, as the voltage, as for the voltage L3, which is given by 2.5 millivolts, in order to convert from millivolts to the SI unit, which is volt, we divide by 1000. So 2.5 divided by 1000 will give us 0.0025 volts. So V of L3 is equal to 0.0025 volts.
And as for the voltage V across L4, which is given by 17 millivolts, in order to convert from millivolts to volts, we divide by 1000. This will give us 0 0.017 volts. So V of L4 is equal to 0 0.017 volts. Then this is it for exercise number 9. Now in exercise number 10, they are telling me consider the following electric circuit consisting of switch K, a battery of 18 volts, connected to four lamps L1, L2, L3, and L4 traversed by the respective currents as shown below. Always when solving such type of exercises, it's a good habit to write the voltages or currents on the given electric circuit. Here they are telling me that the battery is of 18 volts, so let's write that 18 volts is the voltage of the battery. Now the lamp L3 comes with the following indications, 8 volt, 0 0.5 amperes. So these indications are for the lamp L3. We don't write these indications on the electric circuit unless the lamp L3 is functioning normally. Now number one, they are telling me the switch K is open, 1.1. They are telling me what's the voltage across K. So in this case, the switch K represents an open switch, and we know that always whenever an open switch is in series with the battery, have the same voltage of the battery. Here, the switch K is in series in the with the battery because they have one terminal in common, which is this one. Then let's say an open switch in series with the battery has the same voltage of the battery and in this case the name of the voltage across the switch is given by UEN therefore UEN is equal to 18 volts and now in 1.2 they are telling me what's the value of the current i traversing the circuit let's make it here i1 so what's the value of the current i1 traversing the circuit notice that here the switch k is open and an open switch doesn't allow electric current to pass through therefore the value of the electric current is given by zero so then let's say an open switch doesn't allow electric current To pass it through there for the value of the electric current I1 is given by zero. And now in 1.3, they are telling me what does the inscription 8 volt 0 0.5 ampere means. Notice that these inscriptions are related for the lamp L3 and 8 volt because here 8 the unit of 8 is volt. So 8 volt represents the rated voltage of the lamp L3 under which it functions no normally. So 8 volt is the rated voltage of the lamp L3 under which it functions normally. As for 0.5A or amperes. Amperes is the unit of electric current, therefore 0 0.5 ampere represents the electric current under which the lamp L3 functions normally.
then this is it for part one of this exercise now in number two they are telling me the switch key is closed and the lamp l3 is functioning normally then let's close the switch and the moment we close the switch they are telling me the lamp l3 is functioning normally so what does this mean recall that l3 comes with the following indication 8 volt 0 0.5 amperes so because the lamp l3 is functioning normally now we can say that the voltage across the lamp l3 is given by 8 volt and the electric current traversing the lamp l3 is given by 0 0.5 amperes notice that here the electric current traversing the lamp l3 is given by i3 therefore the value of the electric current i3 is given by 0 0.5 amperes okay and this holds because the lamp l3 is functioning normally now in 2.1 they are telling me what's the voltage across k notice that here in this case k is a closed switch and we know that the voltage across a closed switch is zero because it acts as a connecting wire then let's see the voltage zero because so the voltage given by uean so what does uean represent the voltage across the closest switch is given by in this case zero and notice that zero doesn't have an unit because zero multiplied by anything is zero and now in number 2.2 they are telling me UDE is equal to zero justify now DE represents a connecting wire and we know that the voltage across a connecting wire is zero then we have in this case UDE is equal to zero now in 2.3 they are telling me what's the voltage across the lamp L3 which is given by UCD justify notice that here they are telling me that the lamp L3 is functioning normally and in 2.3 they are telling me what's the voltage across the lamp L3 because the lamp L3 is functioning normally then the voltage across the lamp L3 which is given by UCD is equal to the rated voltage which is given by 8 volts because the lamp L3 is functioning normally Now, oh, since the lamp L3 is functioning normally, then the rated, then the applied voltage. is equal to the rated voltage so in this case ucd is equal to 8 volts and now in 2.4 they are telling me to deduce the voltage across the lamp l4 here the word deduce that means that we need to use the part just previously before in 2.3 we have justified why the voltage across the lamp l3 is given by 8 volt Notice that here the lamps L3 and L4 are in parallel because they have two terminals in common and they are given by C and D and whenever two electric components are in parallel they have the same voltage and this is given by law of uniqueness of voltages. So L3 and L4 are in parallel. then according to law
Okay. So they give half a mark for mentioning the grouping and half a mark for mentioning the loop. Now in 2.5, they are telling me knowing that the voltage across the lamp L2 is given by 4 volts. So this is the lamp L2, the voltage across the lamp L2 is given by 4 volts. Calculate the voltage across the lamp L1. So we need to calculate the voltage across the lamp L1. Uh, so here we have the voltage of the lamp and we have the voltage across the lamp L2 and we have the voltage UCD. Therefore, we can apply the law of additional voltages in order to determine the unknown voltage, which is, which is across the lamp L1 and it's given by UAB. Then apply law of addition of voltages then how do we apply this law always on the left will we write the voltage of the battery which is given by UPN and on the right we will write the voltages across different electric components starting from the point P and ending with the point N then from P we will go to A from A to B, from B to C, from C to D, D to E, and E back to N. Now the voltage UPN is given by 18. Now UPA is equal to 0. Uh, we didn't justify previously why UPA is equal to 0. So here between the brackets UPA is equal to 0. And the reason is given by connecting wire. Now the voltage that we need to determine is given by, which is the voltage across the lamp L1, which is given by UAB. So we put UAB in a box and we leave it as a variable. Now as for the voltage, UBC is given by 4. The voltage UCD is given by 8. And the voltage UDE is equal to zero justified previously. UEN is equal to zero also justified previously because we have a closed switch. Then 18 is equal to UAB plus a 12. Then this is a linear equation in one unknown. The unknown is given by UAB, so we put UAB on one side and all the other numbers on the other side. So UAB is equal to 18 minus 12 which is given by 6 since 18 is in volts and 12 is in volts then the voltage UAB will be in volts so UAB is equal to 6 volts Now, in 2.6, they are telling me, in this case, what's the value of the current I3 traversing the lamp L3. Recall that the lamp L3 carries two indications, and they are given by 8 volt and 0 0.5 amperes. In number 2, they told me that the lamp L3 is functioning normally. Then the applied voltage is given by 8 volts, and the traverse current is also equal to the rated current, which is given by 0 0.5 amperes. Then, let's say, since the lamp L3 is functioning normally then the traverse current is equal to the rated current and in this case we have I3 is equal to 0 0.5 amperes now in 2.7 they are telling me lamps L1 and L2 are traversed by the same current justify Notice that the lamps L1 and L2 are in series because they only have one terminal in common which is given the point B and we know that whenever two electric components are in series they have the same current and this is given by law of uniqueness of currents. Then 
let's mention the grouping that L1 and L2 are in series. Then according uniqueness of currents they have the same current so in this case we have that i1 is equal to i2 now in 2.8 they are telling me calculate the value of the current i2 given that i4 is equal to 0 0.3 amperes i repeat that always the trick in solving such type of exercises to write the given on the electric circuit itself. So I4 is equal to 0 0.3 amperes. And in this case, we need to determine the value of the electric current I2. So notice that here the, the electric current I2 is the one traversing the lamp L2. And at the point C, it splits to two currents and they are given by I3 and I4. Therefore, I3 plus I4 will give us the current I2. And this is given by law of addition of currents. Why it's called law of addition of currents? Because we are adding currents. Uh, for this reason, it's given by law of addition of currents. Then apply law of addition of currents. So the current here that it's splitting is given by I2. So I2 is equal to I3 plus R4. And the electric current that we want to determine is given by I2. So we put it in a box. Now I2 is equal to I3, which is given by 0 0.5. And the value of I4 is given by 0 0.3. This will give us 0 0.8. Since 0 0.5 is in amperes and 0 0.3 is in amperes, then the value of I2 will be in amperes. So I2 is equal to 0 0.8 amperes. Now in 2.9, they are telling me to deduce the value of I1. And deduce means that we need to use the part just previously before. In 2.8, we have determined the value of the electric current I2. And already in 2.7, we have proved the equality between I1 and I2. Therefore, in 2.9, Let's say since I1 is equal to I2, but the value of I2 is given by 0 0.8 amperes, then the value of I1 is also equal to I2, which is given by 0 0.8 amperes. Now, in part 3 of this exercise, they are telling me the lamp L3 is replaced by a connecting wire across terminals A and B. The lamp L3 is not functioning anymore. Now, because the lamp L3 is not functioning anymore, so we cannot consider the inscriptions here. And we replace the lamp L2 by connecting. They are telling me the lamp L1 is replaced by a connecting wire. So here we have a connecting wire. We don't have the lamp anymore. Now in 3.1, they are telling me knowing that I3 is equal to 0 0.75 amperes. State what may happen to the lamp L3. Notice that here the lamp L3 has a rated current which is given by 0 0.5 amperes. But in this case, the electric current traversing the lamp is given by 0 0.75 amperes. And because the rated current is greater, uh, the traverse current is greater than the rated current, then in this case the lamp L3 may function strongly or burn out. Now let's say since the traverse current is 
is greater. Then the rated current, and this is because 0 0.75 amperes is greater than 0 0.5 amperes. Then the lamp, which is given by lamp L3, may function strongly. or burn out. We don't know whether the lamp L3 may function strongly or burn out, therefore we need to write both answers. So this is it for exercise number 10. Now in exercise number 11 they are telling me in, the fig in figure 1, so this is figure 1, the main current I1 is equal to 3 amperes, so I repeat, whenever solving such type of exercises we need to write the given on the electric circuit, so this is 3 amperes. And the current through the second lamp L2 is given by 1 amperes. Now in number 1, they are telling me the lamps L3 and L4 are traversed by the same current. Why? Calculate the value of this current. So this part consists of two parts. Let's answer the first one in which they are telling me the lamps L3 and L4 are traversed by the same current. Notice that here L3 and L4 are in series because they have one term in common which is the point D. And whenever two electric components are in series, according to law of uniqueness of currents, they have the same current. Then let's say L3 and L4 are in series. So half a mark for mentioning the grouping and half a mark for mentioning the corresponding law. Now in the same part they are telling me calculate the value of this current. Then in other words, we need to determine the value of the electric current I3. Notice that here the current I1 at the point A splits into two currents and they are given by I2 and I3. Therefore we can determine the value of I3 because I1 is equal to I2 plus I3 and this is given by law of addition of currents. Then apply law of addition of currents. So the main current is given by I1, which is splits to two currents I2 plus I3. And the electric current that we want to determine in this case is given by I3. The value of I1 is given by 3. And the value of I2 is given by 1. So this is a linear equation in one unknown, which is given by I3. So how do we solve such type of equations? We put I3 on one side and all the other unknowns on the other side. So I3 is equal to 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. Since 3 is in amperes and 1 is amperes, so the value of I3 will be in amperes. Then I3 is equal to 2 amperes. So sorry, this is still part one. Now in number two they are telling me the voltage of the battery is determined by connecting it to an oscilloscope of vertical sensitivity as V is equal to four volts per division. And they are telling me that we observe that the luminous line is displaced to two to three divisions upward. So here they are, in other words, here they are giving me the value of y because they are telling me upwards. So the value of y is positive and three divisions. So y is equal to plus a three divisions. Then y is equal to plus a three divisions. So in this case, because the luminous line is displaced upward, so the oscilloscope is measuring a positive voltage. 
Now in 2.1 they are telling me does the oscilloscope measures UPN or UNP justify? So first of all, the voltage UPN is positive because we are measuring the voltage from the positive pole to the negative pole. As for the voltage UNP is given by negative because we are measuring the voltage from the negative pole to the positive pole. They are telling me, does the oscilloscope measures UPN or UNP justify? Notice that here, the luminous line, when we connect the oscilloscope to the battery, the luminous line is displayed, uh, displaced upward. So this means that we are measuring a positive voltage, which corresponds for UPN. Then let's say since the luminous line is displaced upward, which means that okay then <clears throat> which is UPN is positive then the oscilloscope measures UPN Now in 2.2 they are telling me redraw the figure 1 and, sh and show the connection of the oscilloscope. So this is the battery. This is the lamp L1. This is the lamp L2 connected back to the negative pole of the battery. This is the point A, B, and P. Okay. Now across the point A, we have a connecting wire, which is the point C. This is the lamp L3. This is the lamp L4 connected to the point B. This is the electric current I2 given by 1 amperes. This is the electric current I3 given by 2 amperes. This is the electric current I1 given by 3 amperes. Okay, hope we didn't forget anything. Now we need to, to show the connection of the oscilloscope. So here, because the oscilloscope is measuring UPN, and we know that uh, the first point corresponds to the phase terminal and the second point corresponds to the mass terminal. So this is the connection of the oscilloscope like this. This is the phase terminal and this is the mass terminal. Now in 2.3 they are telling we prove that the measured voltage of the battery is 12 volts. Then in other words we need to calculate the voltage measured by the oscilloscope using the formula U is equal to SV multiplied by Y. Here we need to assign points for the voltage U. Already in 2.2 and 2.1 we have proved that the oscilloscope is measuring UPN. So U is equal to SV multiplied by Y is given by the voltage UPN. Now the vertical sensitivity is given by 4 volts per division and the value of y is given by plus 3 divisions so multiplied by plus 3 this will give us 12 since y is in the SI and as we in the SI so the value of u will be in the SI which is given by volts then upn is equal to 12 volts
And now in number three, they are telling me what's the voltage U and B justify. Then across we have across B and then we have a connecting wire, and we know that the voltage across a connecting wire is given by zero. The voltage across a connecting wire. Is zero so UBN is equal to zero UBN or UNB it's the same let's write it here UNB because if we flip the two letters it will be minus zero and zero is equal to minus zero and now in number four they are telling me if the voltage so here we have proved that UPN is equal to 12 volts, let's, let's write it down. Now in number 4 they are telling me the voltage UPA is equal to 3 volts, calculate the voltage UAB. So the voltage across the lamp L1 is given by 3 volts, we need to calculate the voltage UAB. Notice that here we know the voltage of the battery and we know the voltage of the lamp L1. So we can calculate the voltage UAB across the lamp L2 using law of addition of voltages. then apply law of addition of voltages always whenever we apply this law we will write on the left the voltage of the battery which is given by UPN and on the right we will write the voltage across different electric components starting from P and ending with the point N so, so from U to from P to A plus now here from A, we can go directly to B, or we can go to B across C, D, and E. But notice that here in the question, they are telling me to calculate the voltage UAB. So we need, we require for UAB to appear in the equation. Therefore, we will go from A to B directly, so UAB, and we need to calculate the voltage UAB. Then from B, we will go directly to N. So... The value of UPN is given by 12 proved. UPA is equal to 3 given. Now UAB we keep it as a variable because we need to calculate it. And the value of UBN we have already proved in number 3 to be given by 0. So 12 is equal to 3 plus UAB. So the value of UAB is given by 12 minus 3. This will give us 9. Since 12 is in volts and 3 in volts, then the voltage UAB will, give, will be given by volts. So UAB is equal to 9 volts. Now, in number 5, they are telling me, knowing that the lamps L3 and L4 are identical, calculate UCD across L3 and UDE across L4. So here they are telling me that the lamps L3 and L4 are identical. So they have the same voltage. Notice that here in part 4 we have proved that the voltage UAB is given by 9 volts. What does the voltage UAB represent? The voltage UAB, which is given by 9 volts, it's the voltage across the lamps L3 and L4 because AC is a connecting wire and BE is a connecting wire. So we can prove that UCE is equal to 9 volts. Now, after we prove that UCE is equal to 9 volts, because the lamps L3 and L4 are identical, then each one, the applied voltage of each lamp will be given by 4.5 volts, because 9 divided by 2 will give us 4.5. So first, let's prove that the voltage across the two lamps is given by UCE, which is equal to 9 volts, and this is given by law of addition of voltages. Then we can say that because they are identical, they have the same voltage. So number, fi number 5, now let's calculate the value of UCE, which is the voltage across the lamps L3 and L4. Then this is done using law of addition of voltages. So how do I apply this law? On the left, we will, we will always write the voltage of the battery, which is given by UPN. Then we'll go from P to N across different electric components. 
here we want to calculate the voltage UCE across the lamps L3 and L4 so we want UCE to appear in the equation so from P to A and from A to C now we will go directly from C to E in order for UCE to appear in the equation UCE and sorry this is E plus from E to B and from B back to N the voltage GPN is given by 12 the voltage GPA is given by 3 now the voltage UAC is equal to 0 and the reason is given by connecting wire notice that we didn't justify this previously so UAC is equal to 0 and the reason is given by connecting wire now the voltage that we want to determine is UCE so we keep it as a variable plus now what about the voltage UEB USB equal to 0 and the reason is given by connecting wire and UBN is equal to 0 already justified so UCE is equal to 12 minus 3 which is equal to 9 since 12 is in volts and 3 is in volts so the value of UCE will be in volts which is given by 9 volts so UCE is equal to 9 volts then what does this mean this means that the voltage across the lamps L3 and L4 is given by 9 volts and because they are identical then each one will have the same voltage now let's say since the lamps L3 and L4 are identical then they have the same voltage so the voltage across the lamp L3 the first one which is given by UCD and the voltage across the lamp L4 is given by UDE which is equal to the voltage UCE divided by 2 the value of UCE is given by 9 divided by 2 this will give us 4.5 since UCE is in volts which is 9 then the value 4.5 will be in volts so the voltage across the lamp L3 is given by 4.5 volts and the voltage across the lamp L4 is given by 4.5 volts so this is it for exercise number 11 now in exercise number 12 they are telling me the circuit shown in the, doc in the document 1 below consists of a battery supplying across its terminals a constant voltage GPN is equal to 20 volts three electric components D1, D2 and D3 number 1 1.1 so the title of this part is calculation of voltages in 1.1 they are telling me show that UAC is equal to 20 volts so we have the voltage of the battery PA is a connecting wire CN is a connecting wire therefore we can determine the voltage UAC using law of addition of voltages then apply law of addition of voltages so how do we apply this law always on the left we write the voltage of the battery which is given by UPN and on the right we'll go across different electric components starting from P and ending with N so UPA now here from A we have two choices either we can do, go directly to the point C or we can go to the to the point C across the point B since here in the equation they are telling me to show that UAC is equal to 20 volts so we need to UAC to appear in the equation therefore we'll go directly to the point C so UAC plus UCN now the value of UPN is given by 20, UP is equal to 0 and the reason is given by connecting wire now we keep UAC as a variable because we need to calculate it and the value of UCN is also equal to 0 and the reason, reason given by connecting wire 
So in this case, your AC is equal to 20 volts because your PN is in volts. Now in 1.2, they are telling me indicating the low use, calculate the voltage UAB, knowing that UVC is equal to 12 volts. So now the voltage across the electric component D2 is given by 12 volts. And they are telling me to calculate the voltage UAB across the electric component D1. So we know the voltage of the battery and we know the voltage across the electric component D2. Therefore, the voltage across the electric component D1 can be calculated using also law of additional voltages. So apply law of additional voltages. Now here, because we want to calculate UAB, so we want UAB to appear in the equation. So UAB, and we put it in a box, because this is the variable that we want to calculate, plus UBC, plus from C back to N. So UPN is equal to 20, UPA is equal to 0, already justified, UAB, plus UBC, which is given by 12, plus UCN, which is 0. So 20 is equal to UAB, plus 12. This is a linear equation in one unknown, which is given by UAB. So UAB is equal to 20 minus 12, which is equal to 8. Because 20 is in volts and 12 is in volts, so UAB will be in volts, which is given by 8 volts. So UAB is equal to 8 volts. This is it for part 1.2. Now in number 2, they are telling me calculation of currents. Given I1 is the electric current carried by the electric component D1. So this is I1. I3 is the electric current carried by the electric component D3. This is D3, I3. The electric current carried by the battery is I is equal to 10 milliamps. So this is I which is equal to 10 milliamps. The electric current carried by the electric component D2 is I2, which is equal to 3 milliamps. Indicating the lows used, we need to calculate I1, then I3. So here notice that they are telling me to calculate I1 first, then I3. So first, let's calculate the value of the electric current I1. Notice that D1 and D2 are in series. So according to law of uniqueness of currents, they are traversed by the same current. So if D2, if D2 is traversed by an electric current given by I2 is equal to 3 milliamps, then the value of I1 will be also 3 milliamps because D1 and D2 are in series and they are traversed by the same current. This is given by law of uh, uniqueness of currents. First, let's mention the, the grouping between D1 and D2. D1 and D2 are in series. Uh, according to law of uniqueness of currents they have the same current so I1 is equal to I2, which is equal to 3 milliamps. But always, all the quantities must be in the SI. So here milliamps is not the SI unit of electric currents. And in order to convert from milliamps to amps, we simply divide by 1000. So dividing 3 by 1000, this will give us 0 0.003 amperes. So the value of the electric current I1 is given by 0 0.003 amperes. Which is also given by 3 milliamperes.
And now after we have calculated the electric current I1, we need to calculate the electric current I3. So now we know the value of the electric current I1. And we already know the value of the electric current I. So notice that here the electric current I at the point A splits into two currents and they are given by I1 and I3. Therefore we can calculate the value of the electric current I3 using law of addition of currents. Then apply law of addition of currents. I always on the left we write the main current which is given by I that splits into two currents and they are given by I1 plus I3. Now the unknown that we want to determine is given by I3. The value of the electric current I is given by tan and I1 is given by 3. We keep I3 as a variable. Then I3 is equal to tan minus 3 which is, will give us 7. Since 10 is in milliamps and 3 is in milliamps, then the value of I3 will be in milliamps. Notice that milliamps is not the SI unit of electric current. We need to convert it to the SI, which is given by ampere. So dividing by 7 by 1000, this will give us 0 0.007 amperes. So the value of the electric current I3 is 0 0.007 amperes. So that's it for me in this video guys, in the next part we'll complete solving exercises related to this chapter.